You did a lot of research for this book, and you've also written a book about Alzheimer's. So yes. what's, the, what's the nexus there? How do these two things come together, Alzheimer's and chess? Right. Well, everyone in, in the Alzheimer's community is searching for a way to prevent Alzheimer's. And it turns out one important way, it's not a surefire, but right. you need to use your brain. As you get older, particularly, you need to exercise your brain in any way. And the more exercise you get in your brain, it's just like you know, keeping, fit, keeping your body right. fit, uh, the, the better off you are, the better chance you stand of preventing diseases like Alzheimer's disease. And it certainly makes sense. I mean, if you're, if you're sure. sort of keeping your mind active, then maybe you're warding off uh, potential problems. And chess is particularly good for this? Turns out to be a particularly good brain builder. It's a, it's a fairly easy game to learn if you, if you want to. It takes, you know, it takes a little while, but you can learn it. But the, the possibilities of play are endless. So you never run out of that challenge. It's not like you play for a year and then you get bored well, of it. I was surprised to read that the, what are the number of possible combinations on a board is, what is the number? 10 to the 120th power. So you're never going to run out again. No person and no computer will ever be able to really touch the, the tip of the wow. iceberg of chess. So it keeps going. And when should you start playing? I mean, is it good to start as a young person, get your kids into chess? The earlier the better, absolutely. They now have studies. They've been, they've been thinking that this probably was true for a long time, but now they have the studies to show that particularly for young kids, chess is like a stairmaster for logical thinking. I hmm. mean, it helps you build your logical thinking and, and think symbolically, which of course is what intelligence is based on. Well, tell me more about what it is about chess that's exercising your brain, because you, you actually looked into one of your own ancestors, right. and a study it was your great great grandfather right, who was a right. chess master and was part of a study where they were trying to figure out how chess masters think, how their brain is working. That's right. And this is uh, by the famous psychologist Binet, a hundred years ago in France. And it turned out he wanted, to, he wanted to know what makes a great memory. So he studied a lot of different groups, particularly chess masters. And he thought he was going to find that they had this photographic memory. This used to be the old right. myth that we could think. That they would memorize the board. That's right. That you would just have these snapshots. That the, the great thinkers had these amazing snapshots. That's really not how memory works. And chess helped Binet to understand that it's more about pattern recognition. So if we think about it in terms of music, it's not the individual notes. It's more that you recognize the chords or the melody that helps you huh. think farther and faster than, than the next person. So when a great player is playing chess, what are they, what are they seeing or how are they, how are they computing Be the game? Partly because of how much they've played, partly because of their ability to recognize patterns. They're not just seeing a bunch of distinct pieces and having to calculate what every little piece will do. They're seeing the pieces that, working, that are working together. They're seeing patterns the way we see words or phrases or musical melodies in, in other walks of life. And with your understanding of Alzheimer's from the other book that you wrote, are there other games that would, I mean, checkers or, or backgammon or Anything that's puzzles? challenging is great. So anyone, if you find it boring, it's not going to do you any good if you find it challenging if it's a new language if it's chess uh, you know anything that's truly challenging will be will be great it's for be you. helpful you have to tell the story about your great great grandfather because there, there's a little more to it and it was so fascinating for me to read about you you actually traced back some of your own ancestors that's and, right and made links that you that you had not yeah I mean as far as I knew it was a myth the guy didn't even exist but I, <laughs> I, I wanted to know you know and they said that there was this watch that he had been given by one of the Napoleons and I ended up tracking that down and now I'm actually back together with a, a part of my family I didn't even know existed oh there's the watch until oh well, great they got a picture of it. Yeah. Of it. yeah. Uh, so now it, actually chess in way I couldn't have anticipated when I started writing the book has brought my own family together. That's great. Are you a good player? I am very mediocre. Let's see your first move. Give me your first I, I move. I would go e4 probably, but <laughs> but you know. Uh, That's what I've been taught, right? And then I do the counter. There. Yeah. Well, then I'd probably move a night. I'd probably move a night. But, <laughs> we'll be know. going here all day, yeah. <laughs> exercising our minds. If you want to read a chapter of this new book, The Immortal Game, A History of Chess, you can log on to our website. That's at abcnews.com. Thanks so much. Very Thank interesting.